chase ya. Well... Okay. Hey, no fair! Show, come on! What's the matter? It's just the mail. Come on, I'm desperate. If I don't hear something from the outside world soon, I'm gonna crack! Well, let's just see what the postman's brought. <laughs> Could this be for you? Oh, no, I guess not. But, ooh, here's an exciting opportunity to refinance your home at today's low rate. Michelle! You know, it's never too early to start planning for retirement. That does it. Prepare to... Roar! Hey, Jason, Come on, stop. hand it over. Cut it out! It's no <laughs> use resisting. Goodness, Muffins, what's all this? Michelle won't let me see the mail. Now, now, Michelle, what is it the good book says? Oh, yes, do not withhold good from those who deserve it when it is in your power to act. I suppose that goes for the mail as well. I was gonna give it to him eventually. Let's see. Bills, bills, some lovely coupons, a card for Michelle. Ooh, and here's a nice letter for Jason. From me? Hey, it's from Trevor. Look, here's a picture of him on the anti-gravity simulator. Personally, I never understood why a bunch of kids would wait in line just to get nauseous. Well, come along, ducks. We'll all read our mail over some delicious prune trifle. Yeah, here we can get nauseous without the weight. Let's sing a little song with eight little words about a rocket ship and flightless birds. <laughs> Kevin. Three, two, one. And being weightless is so cool. Friday, we learn all about space storms. Rocket science is a real blast. Get it? Ha ha. Hey, remember that day we went to Astroland and rode on the Twister 28 times in a row? Nobody can take centrifugal force like you and me, right? I really wish you were here. Stuff's always more fun when you're around. Well, I gotta go meet John Glenn. Write soon and tell me all the exciting things you've been doing. Your pal, Trevor. Trevor to write to you, wasn't it? I'm sure he misses you a lot. Yeah, I can tell. You should write him back right away. I bet he'd love hearing from you. You can tell him all about what you've been doing. Good idea. There was that paperclip chain you made and helping Grandma put on her hairnet. And that awful morning we, uh, ran out of toast. Ooh, don't like to think about that too much. Well, I'm sure Trevor's having too much fun to bother reading any letter from me. You know, love, he might be a little homesick. Hearing from you could be just what the doctor ordered. Yeah, I think I'll just go upstairs. I'm sure you'll do the right thing, dear. Huh? Captain Manolo crept stealthily closer, ever closer to danger, until finally... Aha! Well, hello. There you go, Preston. Home sweet home, complete with exercise facilities. Hey, want to see my secret treasure box? This is a high-tension atomic coil. And this is my Captain Jupiter secret decoder ring. And this is intergalactic astro currency. Actually, it's just a smashed penny I got when I was at Astroland with Trevor. Isn't that right, Fuzzy Face? Who are you talking to? Ha! Uh, nothing, really. Uh, why don't you go play with your doll? Maybe I don't want to. 
Why don't you answer Trevor's... Did your shirt just squeak? A mouse! You've got a mouse! I named him Preston. How do you do, Preston? Look, Miss Pretty Pretty, an available bachelor for your tea party. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Preston is a man's mouse. I was simply hoping to expose Preston to a little culture. He doesn't need culture. He needs space adventure. Fine. When Fuzzy Face changes his mind, we'll have a lovely tea party waiting for him in the loft. Ta-ta! All systems are go for Captain Preston of the Space Mouse Patrol as the mighty ship prepares to launch. Three, two, Preston! Forty-foot Ronin! Cadet Jason T. Conrad, report for duty immediately. Huh? Oh, sure. Just give me a minute. I gotta find Preston. No time, Cadet. We have an urgent mission in the Zembroid Council... Uh, council? Uh, council? Council? Corn... Whatever. It's that way. Okay, but could you wait just Dr. A... Vigil, Galizalin. <laughs> Mission Cadet Conrad is a highly classified one. Kevin? Huh? Oh, all right then. As you can see from these photos, I was strikingly handsome even as an infant. Now here's one with me on my mommy's lap. Oh, here I am looking adorable. And ooh, there's my old high chair. Oh, look uh, at the little Captain, cutie Gucci. The mission? Oh. We are headed for Space Colony Double Wide. It's interstellar cyclonic doom funnel season there, and our cargo is their supply of emergency duct tape. Emergency duct tape? Yes, it's for lashing the space colony modules together. Otherwise, they slip their moorings, and those fragile trailers bash each other in the high winds until they're splintered into smithereens. If we don't get it there in time, the entire population is done for. <laughs> <laughs> Now can we get back to my baby pictures? Age two. Like many a young lad, potty training was a hard road to hoe. But even as a pre-captain infant, I was able to buckle down to business. Empty. We're running on fumes. You told me you prepared everything for the mission. Of course. And here it is. Styling gel, mousse, conditioner. But what about gas? You said you got gas. And I did. But I'm feeling much better now, thank you. I meant rocket fuel! Oh. Uh, guys, wouldn't it be a good idea to get some more fuel quick before we totally run out? Ah, good thinking, cadet. There's a fueling station just up ahead. I see it. But if we're gonna make it, we better get that fast. Hang on, lads. It's two cents cheaper over there. I'm on it. Uh, uh, Captain, uh, the, the uh, fuel, there's a, a, a tank. It's uh, too fast. <sighs> a captain's work is never done. <laughs> Give me those. Honestly, am I the only one around here who knows how to keep it together? You don't see me losing my cool over a simple landing approach. Mitchell, uh, uh, the landing site, there's a tank! Ah! Hey, pipe down over there! Guy can't even hear himself think around here. Good grief, that thing is miles away. I don't know why you guys are so... Sweet spawning salmon, we're all gonna die! Ah! 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 <laughs> Woo! Down to the last drop. What? 
I told you we were gonna run out of gas. Now remember, one chewy chunky glob of fudge bar, sugarless, some barbecued lard chips, and a slimy slurp. Extra slime. All right then. Uh, they were out of a chewy chunky glob of fudge, so I got you an icky gooey slab of slop. It's not the same. Here's yours. Thanks, mate. Here you are, Fidgel. Mm, delightful. Thank you, Kevin. And one for you. Thanks. What's that? Not sure, really. I got it free with my prune trifle burrito. B-I-N-G. Beneficial imprinting neural net gizmo. Bing! Look, here's the button to start it. Oh. Uh. Hey, you guys, check this out. Most interesting. I believe that Bing has somehow imprinted on Kevin's behavior, like a newborn duckling does with the first creature it sees. You know, it's inspiring when two great minds meet. And this is Midgel. He's the pilot. He's got 15 buttons. Right. See, this is the hyperspace modulator, and this one here is the auto-anti-gravitational transducer. And this is the one that goes vroom. Hey, don't touch them! Did you see that? We must have been doing warp 10. Bing, you're a corker. Bing, you're amazing. You've tripled the sensitivity of my instruments. I never even knew what those last 10 buttons were for. This is Jason. I'm afraid he hasn't got any buttons. Unless you count my belly button. And this is Captain Zigil. He's only got one button. But it's a very big button. Any captainish problems Bing can help you with? He's very helpful. Well... Oh, I really like that last one, though. Looks like Kevin's got himself a new best friend. Nothing like a best friend, I always say. I got three back home. How about you, Jason? Uh, yeah. At least, I think I still do. Captain, we're approaching Space Colony Double Wide. All right, men, prepare for land. Whoa! Hey, what's happening? There's something wrong. My instruments are indicating an approaching doom funnel. But with a power ten times greater than usual, it's at least a Force 200. But it, it can't be. That only happens once every three gazillion years. And not until June. Then what's that? This is dreadful. Those poor double Wideans will never survive a Force 200 doom funnel. Look, there they are. They're all doomed. Now, look closer. Everyone's gone. The place is deserted. They must have all evacuated when they saw the doom funnel coming. An excellent plan. Midgel, reverse course. We're out of here. Aye, aye, Captain. I'm picking up some kind of voice signal. I bet it's one of those annoying telemarketers. I'll handle this. Listen, fellow, we're not buying. And stop calling during dinner. No, wait. I think it's a distress call from one of the trailers. But that's impossible. They've all evacuated. This is Professor Wordsworth of the Space Colony Double Y. I knew it. Never fear, Professor. We're coming to rescue you. Hang on. I've identified the signal source. No, 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 no. Don't bother about me. I've decided to stay. Not too often you get a chance to study a doom funnel of this size. My fellow double Wadians disagree, of course. They think I'm quite mad. They've evacuated to the next colony over, Colony Trailer Hitch. They'll be fine unless the doom funnel turns due east. At the moment, I could use a nice treat. 
I've got a real yen for a chewy, chunky glob of fudge. Sorry, how about a nicky gooey slab of slop? It's not the same. <laughs> Professor, you simply must come on board with us. The vortex is getting closer. You're facing certain destruction. But the upside is a chance to study and perhaps learn to control the tornadoes that plague our colony. I judge this year's version to be at least a force 210. Really? I clocked it at 200 with an inverse ratio of plus five. Hey, guys, the doom funnel's swinging back around. Shouldn't we get the professor on board? Excellent suggestion. You know, Professor, my instruments here on our ship have been recently upgraded. Why don't you pop over for a look? Well, I don't know. I've got a dual panel Broadwave transponder. Oh, why didn't you say so? I'll be there in a jiffy. <laughs> Shit much longer. But we can't just leave. This is my home. What, what about my research? The, the colony. Our future survival depends on learning how to defend against the Doom Funnel. Sorry, Professor, but that thing's nearly got a hold of us. We'll need to fight our way out. Dr. Finchel, deploy deflector shields. Aye, aye, Captain. Put deflector shields on our shopping list. Activate cloaking device. What cloaking device? Dr. Finchel, add that to the list. Stand back. I'm throwing everything we've got at it. Nothing's working. We're done for. I think not. A penguin never gives up. And hey, could be worse. Could be raining. <laughs> it's flinging pink flamingos, and the little wire legs are piercing the hull. We can't hold out much longer. You must let me return to my trailer to try to save my home. Now it's headed due east. Straight for my fellow double Whiteians. Let's go, Mitchell. Wait, guys, do not with all good from those who deserve it when it's in your power to act. And we've got Bing. I don't mean to be pushy, Bing, but is there any way you can save an entire civilization? A giant tape ball to cork the vortex. An, An ingenious solution. solution. And he came free with my burrito. Whew, that was close. Well, Professor, I guess you found the answer to your doom funnel problem. All right, penguins, our work here is done. Let's head on home. Yes, home. Um, I'm gonna have to leave you here with the professor. Uh, oh, no, oh no, but those tornadoes will keep coming back and he and his friends need you to help fight them. You're the only one who can help. I feel the same way, but we'll always have the gasteroid. Fascinating. Now Bing is imprinted on the professor. This is most kind of you, Kevin. We shall forever remember your act of goodness. Now then, Bing, shall we see what we can do to spruce things up a bit before everyone returns? Goodbye, Bing. I won't forget you. Did I miss something? Seems to me we're down one robot in the deal. Kevin just realized that it was wrong to keep Bing to himself when he had a chance to do good for the professor and the whole colony. Do not withhold good from those who deserve it when it is in your power to act. Well, all right. He sure made a great little hairstylist, though. Penguins, let's head for home. Captain's log, stardate, uh, men? Trash pickup day? Yes, thank you. Trash day. I was looking for something a little more specific. Anyway, thanks to Jason's on-the-spot advice, Bing has a new job. The Zembroid Constant Council, can't. The professor and his colony's day was saved. And most importantly, 
I've learned that hyperspace gives my skin a saucy glow. That's funny. I thought I spotted a couple of crow's feet. You may know engines, Midgel, but you've got a lot to learn about skin care. I do not have crow's feet. Penguins don't get crow's feet. They're laugh lines. Preston, farm boy, where are you? And now, continuing with our bridal fashion show, our next lovely model wears a oh, blue man. with an ivory silk train. A sonnet for springtime. You know, Preston was wondering if you met in Paris last season. Ah, Preston, don't answer that. Well, if it isn't a common party crasher. <sighs> and just today, I found this really excellent mouse named Preston. Well, guess that's about it. Glad you're having a great summer, too. As someone I know once said, ain't nothing like a best friend. Oh, in case you're a little homesick, here's something to help cheer you up. Maybe next year we can try to break our record on that coaster. Signed, your best bud, Jason. Nighty-night, cupcakes. Time to say your prayers. Dear God, please bless Grandmama and keep Mom and Dad safe on their trip. And thank you for teaching me the importance of doing good things for people whenever I have the chance. And please watch over Preston. He's a really great mouse. Even if he did eat the bridal bouquet. Amen. Amen. Now put your pedal to the metal and give a warm helmet lounge welcome to Rip Roaring and the Tailgaters. One, two, one, two, three, four. Well, he rides the road, hauling heavy loads. He's a spaceship driving man. He drives sure and straight, and he's never late. He's a spaceship driving man. Yep, this here's a story of a fella, a truck, and a load of party ice. Like most stories, this one starts at a mini mark. It was the day of the big race, and the whole galaxy had turned out to see two giants of the road going head to head for the title of Space Trucker of the Year. There was Scaly Slim, the meanest, sneaky, road hogginest trucker in the galaxy. And I don't always floss. Yep, he was a real scoundrel. Up against him was a legend of the space lanes. He had the keenest eye, the steadiest hand, the fastest foot, not to mention the best penmanship, of any trucker in the galaxy, Big Midge. I'm the bird to beat. I'm no parakeet. I'm a spaceship driving man. When I win this meet, you can smell my feet. You space race losing man. Now remember, the aim here is to Now the aim of the race was for the boys to haul their cargo to the far end of the galaxy. First one to cross the finish line would be crowned the new champion. Y'all ready? Stop, what should I do? But Scaly Slim was gaining fast. Big Midge refused to come in last, and so he made the choice to drive on through. Well, I ride the roads, hauling heavy loads. I'm a spaceship driving man. He was doing fine till he saw a sign about helping when you can.
Looks like Mitch could win the race. Well, I think I really hurt my face. Then came another chance to do some good. Slim starts to pull away. Should I go or should I stay? Our hero knows it's time to do what's right. When he rides the road, though he's pigeon toed, he's a spaceship driving man. He drives sure and straight, and he's never late. He's a spaceship driving man. Berries, melon balls, and fresh bing cherries, tangerines at 215 a pound. He took a shortcut past the sun, and when his dirty deeds were done, Scaly Slim had won the race hands down. Yup, Big Midge had struck out big time. To make matters worse, the delay had caused his cargo to turn into icy slush. Lovely load of slush, pal. Now this here is what party ice is supposed to look like. Yeah! Seems that little shortcut past the sun had melted all of Slim's party ice. His cargo was ruined, and so was the party. Ah, shucks! It's just not the same without party ice. And maybe those little weenies on toothpicks. But then Big Midge got an idea. Putting together the traffic cones and the flavored syrup with his load of icy slush, he made... Snow cones for everyone! This party is insane! Nothing I love more than a taste of garnish. Say, where'd y'all get this here fruit? Well, they told him everything. So, for cheating, double dealing, and illegal use of melon balls, the trophy was taken away from Slim. I want this here prize to Big Midge, the true blue space trucker of the year. Yeah! Well, he learned he could do a lot of good, helping folks when he can. Now he glows with pride, feeling good inside. He's a spaceship driving. 